Okay. Okay, so we have here uh, two workstations, two setup to do uh, chloride content analysis in concrete. Uh, we do both acid soluble chloride and water soluble chloride according to the procedures of ASTMC 1218 uh, for water soluble chloride and C1152 for acid soluble chloride. When we do acid soluble chloride, we digest uh, 10 grams of uh, pulverized concrete sample in nitric acid in diluted nitric acid, 1 plus 7 nitric acid. We digest the concrete powder in the nitric acid and then we do the filtration. We take the filtrate and we analyze the filtrate for chloride using silver nitrate as the titrate. When we do water soluble uh, chloride analysis, we basically take um, same 10 grams of concrete powder and we digest into distilled or deionized water and after we digest in the water we do the filtration we filter the solid residues out we take the filtrate and we analyze the filtrate for chloride uh, by potentiometric titration with same silver nitrate as the titrate so here we have two setup to show you how we do the chloride content analysis on the filtrate after digesting the concrete in acid or water for acid soluble or water soluble chloride content analysis. This is a metrome setup. We have a metrome 751 GDP titrino with 728 starter and we use a 5 milliliter exchange unit which has an amber glass bottle to contain the silver nitrate titrant, we have to use an amber glass to prevent precipitation of silver um, uh, and that's why we have the silver nitrate in the amber bottle and then we attach the 751 titrino to 730 sample changer and the 730 sample changer comes with a 12 position sample rack where we put the plastic beakers from Metro. These are 250 milliliter beaker. We have 12 positions and then we have the tower which moves the electrode and the buret up and down. When it is on the up, it's called home position. In the middle, it's lift position. And when it goes down to the beaker, then it's the work position. Usually what we do is we put 10 samples from station number 1 all the way up to station number 10 and then 11 and 12 we keep it for rinsing and cleaning purposes sometimes we just use the station number 12 with distilled water which cleans the electrode and the buret and we can put 10 samples or 11 samples depending on if we just to use one position for cleaning or one position for cleaning and one position for rinsing uh, we do that, so basically what it does is uh, the column goes down and the electrode inside. Here is we use a silver electrode to do the chloride analysis for the potentiometric titration. This is a silver electrode, the metal electrode that we use. And this is the buret which goes inside. And then it also has a 722 starter. It's a rod starter rod tidal starter as opposed to magnetic starter which is 728 in magnetic starter you put a star bar inside and it does the starting like that and if I want to use the rod starter then we use the 722 rod starter so the rod starter is connected to the titrino the metal electrode is connected to the titrino and the buret through which the silver nitrate titrate comes it's connected to the stop cop of the exchange unit. So when the titration starts, the silver nitrate comes from the main bottle. This is a one liter amber bottle from here to the middle cylinder. The middle cylinder is a five milliliter volume of silver nitrate. So the titrant comes from the main bottle to the middle cylinder. And then there is a piston. The piston goes up at increment and disposes 0.2 milliliter of silver nitrate every time. So it's a very controlled dosing mechanism by which the piston brings little little silver nitrate to be added to the solution. So every time we do chloride analysis we use the silver nitrate as a titrate to determine the chloride content. We also have the exactly same setup 
another one where we have another 751 Titrino and 730 sample changer with 12 position rack where we have 12 beaker so we can do up to 10 to 11 samples per set per rack when we do the chloride analysis we can use two workstation side by side when we do chloride analysis so basically from 20 to 22 samples can be analyzed one time unattended automatically by these two workstations I'm going to show one workstation how we do the chloride analysis I have three two samples right now to show you how we do chloride analysis and every time we do chloride first we have to run the blank by blank I mean we have to have a known amount of chloride and we determine the equivalence point of titration when we get the right equivalence point for the known amount of chloride we know the equipment is properly calibrated then we start running the unknown samples for unknown chloride content to use the blank solution we take distilled water and in the distilled water we add 5 milliliter of sodium chloride solution which is a blank solution and in the sodium chloride solution we prepare it's a 0 0.05 normal sodium chloride solution which is prepared by adding 2.922 grams of sodium chloride in 1000 milliliter of distilled water that's how we prepared the standard solution of sodium chloride we take 5 milliliter of that 0 0.05 normal sodium chloride we just add 5 milliliter with this burette we have two samples of blank so we add 5 milliliter of sodium chloride in both sample 0 0.05 normal and then station number 12 is just distilled water for cleaning the electrode so when the titration will start the electrode and the burette will go to station 1 it do the titration after titration it goes up goes to the station number 12 to clean the burette and electrode then it will go to station number 2 so on and so forth so to do the titration we use the software which is the Brinkman Titrino Workshell software which is here this Brinkman Titrino Workshell software is from Metrome we use the manager is the user and then we have all the units shown up here like 751 this is 751A this is 751B then we have 730 connected to 751A which is this one and then 730 connected to 751B which is this one so all four units can be controlled simultaneously by this watch cell software so to use this stress A for 751 and 730 what we do is we go to work shells work list manager in the work list manager first we choose the macro what is macro macro is a set of commands that we add it which controls the movement of the work station from position one to the rest of the position so these macros are the set of commands which will control the burette and the electrode to go to station 1 the starter will turn on then it will go to station 12 do the cleaning then it will go to the next position all those are set by the set of commands which are under this macro I'll show you that macro when the titration starts so once we add the sample ID this is how we do we go to the add row section and there we add sample size here we had 5 milliliter of sodium chloride solution we added so we take five and we make that as a blank one we have three different IDs usually we add the CMC project number then the sample ID the core ID and then the depth from which the sample is taken with different depth in the core we determine the chloride content from top middle bottom we add those depth in the ID number three we leave the sub macro section empty so that's how we add like first sample and then you click that to add the second sample we have two samples in this demonstration 
blank one and blank two. Once we add the samples, all we have to do is click the green button to show the run the selected macro. Once we click the green button, before we do that, we make sure the electrode is inside. That's the silver electrode. Make sure the burette is inside and make sure the star are inside. Another important thing is to make sure this is a splash shield. Another important thing to make sure is they are not hitting each other. So your burette tip should not be interfered by the fan of the starter and the electro tip should not be interfered by the starter fan. We make sure they are separate here and they are not touching each other. So once they are all properly aligned then we start the titration. We click the green arrow. As soon as we click the green arrow let me open the 751 which will show the titration plot of millivolt versus milliliter of silver nitrate added. I open the macro command where you have the set of macros it's showing and move this screen here so you can see how the titration going step by step it is following the steps of the macro and you can also see the titration in this small screen which is also present here of the 751 and now the column goes down to the first sample once the column goes down, it's showing lift go to work. So the titration started. The starter will turn on. You will hear the starter turning on. Here the starter started. Now it's going to start the titration. It is showing a start delay and then the titration will start. So you will see the plot of millivolt versus milliliter of silver nitrate both in this screen and that screen showing the starting here also if you have to stop the titration for any reason you press this red bar, red box and to start a titration this green arrow it started, you see the plots as soon as the titration started you see the plots there as well as you see here is a small screen it's showing the graph of titration you can expand this to see the plots every increment of silver nitrate added are shown here along the x axis and the millivolt change along the y axis Since I added around 5 milliliter of uh, sodium chloride, equivalence point will come somewhere around 5. It also depends on the amount of water added in the solution. Here we see the plot. and the macro will stay at the weight on instrument section until the titration is done. After titration is done, the rinsing cycle will start and then it will continue the loop for the next sample. So these are the set of commands comes on the macro. So as you can see the millivolt is dropping by continuous addition and here the burette refills once the 5 milliliter is dispensed then the internal column the middle column gets filled again and then it starts dosing again so every time it fills the column from the main chamber from the main container and then at increment dosage the piston will go up and dispense at a fixed volume of silver nitrate every time now it starts dispensing again after it fills the middle cylinder and you can see the, how the titration plot is changing the slope as it comes uh, as it adds more and more silver nitrate the slope will get steeper and steeper and the steepest more point in this graph is the equivalence point which we use to determine the chloride content. There is a formula embedded in the macro to calculate the chloride content from the equivalence point which is basically equivalence point times a factor 0.177 
divided by the sample weight, which is 10 grams. For concrete samples, we take 10 grams of concrete. So equivalence point times the factor divided by the sample weight is the chloride content. So here it's showing how the curve is changing to steep. And as it approaches the equivalence point, it slows down the dispensing of silver nitrate. It's going to come pretty soon. And the equivalence point shows by a circle on the plot. And as soon as it finds the equivalence point, the titration stops. It goes a, a few millimeter more and then it stops. It goes about two milliliter more silver nitrate addition after passing the equivalence point. And then here it is. It found the equivalence point with the green circle. So once it finds the equivalence point, it came around 6.5. It gives the result and it shows the chloride content 0.23% on that solution. It shows where the EP was found, where the equivalence point was found, and then it calculated the chloride content. Now the column will move up to the lift position, which is the middle, and then it will go from sample station 1 to the cleaning station 12, which is called the special beaker 1, which corresponds to station number 12 for cleaning purposes. So it goes down to the cleaning station 12 and then the pump on the back of the column will start and it will rinse distilled water and the distilled water is in that container from that container the distilled water comes you'll hear the pump get the pump started and when the pump started it gives the distilled water it rinse the electrode with the distilled water after rinsing is done it rinse just for a few seconds You can see it's moving the macro. It goes down, then it, after rinsing is done, it goes to lift position, and then it goes to sample two. One is done, then it goes to sample two. You can see the starter running, not touching the electrode, not touching the burette. Then it goes down to the solution for sample number two. As soon as the sample 2 starts, the titration plot starts again. It gives a pre-run screen first before the titration starts. And then the run starts. The plot started appearing as soon as the first dosage of silver nitrate added. Usually the second time it's more accurate than the first time, first run, because of the some air bubble present in the tubing. That's why we always do the first sample run and then another one before we start adding the unknown samples. We do at least two blank samples to clean any air in the passage before we start the unknown sample. So we can accurately determine the chloride content after this calibration is done. Once the 5 milliliter, 5 milliliter silver nitrate is dispensed, it refills the middle column again. It refills for another 5 milliliter and then it continues.
as you can see right near the 5 and 6 milliliter it's getting steeper as anticipated the equivalence point will come somewhere between 5 and 6 Uh, as it approaches the equivalence point, every increment addition of silver nitrate causes significant drop in the millivolt. So it already passed the equivalent point, it usually passes equivalence point and then it gives the equivalence point somewhere in this area the steepest point in the curve usually you get an s separate curve of titration whether it's an acid base or potentiometric titration of chloride that's the one we do here potentiometric titration of chloride in concrete Sulfate is also done the same way. Here is the equivalence point found, shown by circle, and the results are displaced. Percent chloride exactly same as the last one, 0.23, because it's the same two blanks we use. So 0.23 percent chloride. After the titration is finished, it will go up and go to the station number 12 for cleaning again. pump starts After cleaning is done, it goes to station number 3, thinking there might be a sample at position 3, but since we added only 2 rows for 2 samples, it knows there is no more rows, so no more sample, so it stops and then the column goes back to the home position. It ends the set of commands in the macro, the starter turns off at the end, the starter offs and then it goes back to the home position so that's how the automated titration is done so you can go up to 11 samples or 10 samples unattended you just load the sample and walk away and it gives the result of one after the other sample to see the result you go to view results and then you can see the last two ones we just did are shown here. You go to blank two, you see the titration plot, and you see the table showing the millivolt versus milliliter silver nitrate added. The chloride content is shown, the equivalence point is shown, sample ID, date, everything. So to print out this graph and the result, we go to print and carve only. And then it makes a PDF file. We usually have a chloride analysis folder where we have different projects for chloride analysis. And there we add, we give a name for that particular sample ID. And then it creates an Adobe PDF file.
and that's the PDF file where it shows the titration plot and the result at the bottom. I usually pick up just the plot <laughs> in my report and the result. I pick up just the plot and the result. So that's how the titration is done, the report is generated and the chloride content is determined. When we have a small volume sample, like one or two sample, we don't have a large volume sample, just top, middle, bottom, or just one sample, we don't need to use this sample rack. We can do the sample rack, but at the same time, we can simply use the stutter. So all we do, if we have one sample, We take some distilled water, we add some sodium chloride, we use this starter, this magnetic starter, and we add a starting bar, we take the electrode out from here, the main tower, and add the electrode here, we take the burette out of there, add the burette there, and we go down, make sure the entire tip of the electrode and the burette are under water, under solution. They both are under solution, but they're not touching the starting bar, starter bar. So once that's ready, we simply go to the, we don't have to run a macro at this time because we don't have multiple samples. We have just one sample. So we just go to 751 and we say start the titration. Once we stay start the titration, the starter starts. The starting bar, the starter bar starts. You can control the speed of the starter with this knob. We stay somewhere in the middle speed. And the same way the titration starts for just one sample. So that's why we can use the 728 starter to do small volume titration or we can use the 722 the starter for multiple samples in the automated titration. So for chloride analysis we use the silver electrode. Both has their own silver electrode. This is the exact same setup in two workstations to do large volume chloride analysis. Usually we have to use a desiccant to make sure there is no moisture inside the silver nitrate bottle. The desiccant is, is blue when it is clean and it turns to pink color when it absorbs moisture. As you can see, it's absorbing the moisture from the bottle. So the blue desiccant is turning into pink. Once it turns completely pink, like this one, which means it already saturated with moisture from the bottle, we discard this and refill with a fresh shade of blue desiccant. Alternately, you can use also heat that desiccant in oven around 150 to 200 degree centigrade for a couple of hours to bring the to, to remove the moisture and you can reuse the desiccant again. Both these titrators 751 are fantastic to do the chloride analysis. You can see the titration plot on the screen even if you don't have the workshell software and you can see the results. You can set up the method also on the screen with their own keypad. They all have their individual keypad. Here is the keypad for 751 where you can set up the commands if you don't have the software. And here is the keypad for 730 sample changer the controller where you can set up the commands to do the automated titration without the software. 
but if you have the software then you can set up the macros everything on the software you do not need the keypad or the controller to set up here the equivalence point is found some on near 5 since I added 5 milliliter sodium chloride it found at exactly 5.08 milliliter which corresponds to 0.18% chloride in that solution from silver chloride the color turns to milky white color from the silver chloride precipitate so once the titration is done I usually move the electrode and the burette out clean it with distilled water since I don't have a automated cleaning here you clean with the with the distilled water then we take the electrode out and we put the electrode in a potassium nitrite solution storage solution always make sure there is storage solution time to time we fill the storage solution so the electrode is completely inside the tip of the electrode is inside the storage solution right there then it goes on the back of the exchange unit we use the potassium nitrite saturated solution for storing the electrode we take the burette out the burette tip goes inside stays there for automated titration sometimes we remove the splash shield and if there is some salt precipitated on the tip of the starter we just use the distilled water to clean the tip of the starter and then we bring the splash shield down and stay there for the next set of samples to run so this is how we do the automated titration or manual titration depending on the small volume or large volume samples of concrete for water soluble or acid soluble fluoride analysis this setup is exactly same as the other one as I said so we can do up to 20 to 22 samples at a time on the both workstations simultaneously thank you CNC has uh, various uh, titration equipments uh, from Metrom uh, to do uh, different types of titration uh, the most common is the potentiometric titration to determine chloride content in concrete. Uh, uh, we digest a pulverized sample of concrete uh, uh, in uh, nitric acid or uh, uh, deionized water uh, to, to remove um, chloride from concrete uh, uh, and uh, get um, acid soluble chloride or water soluble chloride uh, we digest uh, the concrete uh, powder uh, in the water or nitric acid to get the chloride and then we do the filtration and we take the filtrate and with the filtrate we do uh, potentiometric titration of, uh, chlo of chloride against uh, silver nitrate as a titrant to determine the chloride content uh, and here is a setup um, uh, where we use uh, Metrom uh, eight, uh, 916 T-Touch. It's a touch control uh, titrator from Metrom. Uh, it's a compact uh, tabletop titrator. It comes with uh, a docino to give the silver nitrate, to dose the silver nitrate. It's a Metrom 800 uh, docino. And it comes with a rod starter instead of conventional magnetic stutter it uses a rod stutter 802 stutter and then this entire uh, 916 t-touch titrino uh, uh, titrator is connected to this sample processor it's a 814 USB sample processor 
it comes with a rack containing 12 samples and then um, uh, we have uh, plastic uh, 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 sample cups from uh, station 1 to station 12 up to 10 samples can be loaded in this rack to do automated titration for chloride content from position 1 to uh, position 10 and then 11 and 12 are used for rinsing the electrode and the bullet and cleaning the electrode and the bullet respectively station uh, 11 just to rinse the electrode distilled water comes and rinse the electrode and station 12 has distilled water in it where the electrode goes and, uh, and, and, and it cleans the electrode and here uh, is a silver night silver electrode used for metal electrode used for chloride titration there is a burette which goes inside comes from the dacino and the electrode is on the back connected the metal electrode then these tubings are for distilled water to come for rinsing the electrode so we set up a method to do the chloride titration and we use um, potentiometric titration called DET U from Metrome where basically we load the method and the method we use it has a set of parameters which controls the titration like it moves the rack and lifts the column do the stirring then start the titration and while the titration it starts then it does the calculation for the chloride content it gives the report from the chloride titration then it moves to the next position of the sample so this set of commands are already loaded under the method to do the titration here I'm going to show um, three samples I loaded three samples um, uh, treated as a blank where I am basically doping this sample with sodium chloride um, and uh, using silver nitrate it stays in an amber bottle uh, to prevent silver precipitation and I'm going to use these three samples just to show how the automated titration is done and again station number 12 is just distilled water and station number 11 where the uh, sample will be uh, the electrode will be rinsed so basically it will start the titration in the first sample then it will go to position 12 for cleaning then position 11 for rinsing and then it go to uh, station number 2 so that's how um, the titration will advance so that setup is used to regularly for automated titration of multiple samples um, of acid soluble or water soluble concrete sample this setup is used uh, uh, Metrom 848 Titrino Plus. This uh, setup is used for acid based titration or determination of pH or alkalinity of concrete. We also use a pH meter, a separate pH meter, a portable pH meter, or a pH electrode. And the pH meter has its own pH electrode. And this 848 Titrino Plus is used for regular acid base or alkalinity. Um, and titration uh, and we use this pH buffers uh, to calibrate the pH meter then we also have a, a Metrom 841 Titrando with 803 TI stand this one is used for classical Carl Fischer titration Carl Fischer titration has a limited application in concrete it determines the moisture content and we do the volumetric Carl Fischer titration uh, for moisture content ranging from 0.1% up to 100%. Usually, we to determine the free moisture content in concrete, not the hydrated water, but the free water, we um, immerse the concrete sample in ethanol and we do solvent replacement of moisture by ethanol and we remove the moisture from the concrete, from the pore spaces of concrete by ethanol by solvent replacement. We keep the concrete sample, a small concrete sample in the ethanol solution for days in a sealed container 
and then by the solvent extraction we take the moisture out of the concrete and then we take that ethanol as a sample to determine the moisture content in the concrete. We use hydranol composite 5 as the titrant, Carl Fisher reagent, and since we are doing ethanol substitution for concrete moisture content, we use ethanol as a solvent and then we also have a waste container for titration uh, after titration for material to go and we also use a water standard with 5 ppm water we determine we run the standard first to do the calibration of the Carl Fisher equipment and then we do the titration now the Carl Fisher titration with the 841 titrando that one we use with Tiamo software and then when we do the potentiometric titration for chloride or acid based titration we use the Metrom's T-based software where we collect the data basically these instruments are quite independent to generate the titration plot and once the titration is done the result is automatically transferred to the T-based software where you get the data and then the titration curve and the results everything in the T-based software whereas the Carl Fisher titration we also need a balance to determine the sample weight before and after uh, uh, doping the uh, titrator with the sample we determine the sample weight with the balance uh, and this one is done uh, by Tiamo and uh, Tiamo controls the whole titration here we have the method set up to determine the Carl Fisher titration and when we run this Tiamo we collect the data and it shows the uh, Carl Fisher titration results with the graph and the data show the percent water in the sample after we run the sample we run the titer first which is the hydranol composite and then we run the sample to determine the water content in the in the solution so let me show you first how we do the potentiometric titration which is the most common titration we do for chloride content and how the data is collected in the T-base so to do the potentiometric titration we collect the samples we put the acid soluble or water soluble concrete filtrate in these beakers in these uh, uh, metron beakers and then uh, we insert the sample we insert a sample table and there we insert the data I just inserted three samples where we give the sample weight and the method everything and once the data are inserted for each sample where we can give the project number the sample ID the date uh, where the sample is extracted all the information and after all the information are there we have the electrode inside we have the burette inside once everything is inserted we just press the start button and once we press the start button the titration starts so the rag moves to position 1 the tower goes down from the home position to the work position it does an electro checking the burette fills the cylinder in the burette fills with silver nitrate and then the dosing starts incrementally we are not using this you can also do single sample titration if you don't have multiple samples we don't use this uh, sample rack we simply put the sample in the beaker and we use the rod starter to do the titration of just one sample so low volume, high volume, both types of samples can be analyzed by this setup. The titration plot started. Showing the millivolt versus milliliter of silver nitrate added.
and this is a 5 milliliter burette so after the entire 5 milliliter of silver nitrate is added the burette refills and then start dosing again the cylinder the 5 milliliter cylinder is inside and the piston is inside which dose incremental amount of 0.2 millimeter power increment so the first titration is done it creating report it will give the result of chloride content by weight of concrete then the tower goes up to the work position to lift position then it goes to station 12 for cleaning the electrode and the burette the starter starts it runs for 10 seconds to clean the electrode moves back to the lift position then it goes to station 11 where distilled water comes and pump starts there is a pump on the back of the tower that pump starts pump rinse and that's where the distilled water is this distilled water comes through the tube and the pump is right behind and that's the pump which starts rinsing the sample and now after rinsing it comes back to station number one and then it goes to sample number two pretty straightforward and simple operation and unattended you can just load the sample and walk away up to 10 samples per loading can be done and the results will be downloaded to T-Base it's a fantastic system to do large volume chloride analysis of concrete very precise dosing and when the equivalence point approaches titration flows down the steepest point in the plot represents the equivalence point once the equivalence point is obtained chloride content is determined according to the procedures of ASTM C 1152 and C1218 which is basically a formula of 0.177 times equivalence point divided by sample weight titration done creating the report column moves up to the lift position again it goes back to station 12 for cleaning the electrode the pump will start it brings the distilled water for rinsing it rinses just for 2-3 seconds the main cleaning done during cleaning it pauses at station 1 and then it heads towards station number 3 
to the third and last sample in this series. Earlier days, uh, we used to do chloride titration by the conventional method of using the glass pipette and the glass burette. Where in the glass burette, we used to fill the silver nitrate. We used to cover the burette with a black cloth to make sure it doesn't precipitate silver. So that was the old conventional method of doing chloride titration. And now this is a far better and more precise and uh, automated method from Metrom, the Swiss company which revolutionized doing titration. As soon as it finds the steepest point, the steepest part of the titration plot, the report starts generating. Then it goes to special beaker 1. Position 12 is called special beaker 1. And position 11 in the rack is called special beaker 2. To separate those two beakers from the rest of the 10 beakers which contain sample. The shield is used to protect the electrode on the burette. It's called splash shield. After titration is done, rinsing is done. The rack goes back to position 1. And stays there and wait for the next load of samples. So that's how the automated titration is done. And after the titration is done, you basically go to T-Base. And in the T-Base, you collect the sample. This is the T base, and once you come to T base, it's called TI base version 1.1. So basically, you go to determination, import, and uh, the samples that we just did to see those samples details. So basically, the three samples that we did, we just transferred those samples. They're automatically transferred to T-Base. And like here, we did the last sample. It shows the titration plot. And it shows the equivalence point where it found. And then it also gives the result in the result window. How much chloride is present. 0.02% my mass of concrete. It gives the chloride content. It also gives the details of the method, the configuration, which equipment was used. 916 Ti touch with 815 sample processor. So this is how the whole result comes. And then um, it gives the whole report from that. So you just print out this report either in a PDF form you say report, it will just print out the report 
either in the PDF form or any other format you prefer, Word or Excel. So once the result is done, it created the report. Let me show you how the report looks. Here is an example of the report that we just did. There it is. It gives the details, the sample data, and the titration plot. Usually in my reports I pick up the plot and the chloride content and include that in my report. I don't include the whole Metrom report. I just pick up the result and the titration plot and that's what I provide in my in my data, in my report. So that's how the chloride content is done by, by T-Base. Now when we do the acid-based titration, we use this 848 as I said, 848 Titrino Plus it's attached to the 801 stutter. In this case, you have it's a magnetic stutter, so you have to put a stutter, magnetic stutter bar inside the beaker. And here I just I'm going to show you a simple acid-based titration. So I'm using sodium hydroxide as my titrant. And I'm going to put little drops of hydrochloric acid to show the acid based titration. I have the pH electrode as opposed to metal electrode, the silver electrode that we used for chloride titration. Here we are using a pH electrode. The metal electrode is stored in potassium nitrate storage solution whereas the pH electrode is stored in potassium chloride storage solution. So we have the buret electrode, we simply dip into the solution, make sure they are not touching the stutter. The tip of the pH electrode shouldn't touch that stutter. And that's why we have this stopper, where it stops so it doesn't go all the way down. And once it's set up, everything is ready, you just press go. As soon as the titration starts, the starter starts and the small screen it starts showing the titration plot. Every time we do acid based titration or alkalinity or pH test, we first calibrate the pH meter or the pH electrode with um, three different buffers of pH 4, 7 and 10. The pH electrode has to be calibr calibrated every time before you start the titration or pH determination. This is the mobile pH meter, which we also use to determine the pH of a concrete solution digested in deionized water. For determination of pH, we usually take a pulverized sample of concrete, about 10, 10 grams of concrete we digest in deionized or distilled water. Uh, and then uh, we determine the we do the filtrate filtration to remove the solid residues we take the filtrate and then determine the pH of the filtrate for a normal portland cement concrete the pH comes around 12 and 13 highly alkaline unless the concrete is carbonated then pH goes down to 9 10 in that range
the 916 T touch and the 814 USB sample processor they are connected the sample processor is connected to 916 by the USB port there is an external USB hub that we use where the 814 is connected and then there is a RS-232 cable which goes to the H port converter and from there it connected to the PC by the USB cable while the acid based titration continues let me show you a little more about the T-Base and the Tiamo softwares these are two fantastic softwares especially the Tiamo we use Tiamo version 2.5 the latest version of Tiamo and here you can create methods as per your application here and you can have multiple workplaces database will come here so T-Base is basically a chunk of Tiamo separated and T-Base is only for those two equipments the 916 T-Touch and the 848 whereas Tiamo doesn't work on those, all you need is just a um, database for that. But Tiamo controls the entire titration of the Carl Fisher titration that I'm going to show you next. Here you can create your own method. Like for chloride we have our own method. For Carl Fisher we have... So you can actually custom made how you want to create your methods. Carl Fisher method. one for tighter and one for sample for Carl Fisher and then the configuration comes here where you have all the devices which are connected Tiamo can automatically detect the tit the titration devices Titrino, Titrando uh, all the devices then it, you insert the titrant that you are adding silver nitrate for chloride, hydranol composite for Carl Fisher and all the electrodes that you are using all the configuration comes here of the devices, of the sensors, of the variables, of the titrants, reagents, solutions all those comes in the configuration screen method screen takes all the method you are using database here shows the result and workplace is where it basically gives you the method you are using and then you can control the titration by start, stop, hold, which method sample information, the sample position, all the values goes there and the result shows up live display and then the report comes. The pretty advanced software to do uh, to control and generate the report of titration. Whereas T-Base is a pretty straightforward database software where as soon as the titration done here, the ti here you can see how the equivalence point is approaching with a steep change in the slope of the titration plot it found the equivalence point as soon as the uh, here shows the EP it shows the pH where EP is found so then you can get the data in the database as soon as it is done the result shows up result shows up in the T-Base of the pH titration so this is how you do the pH titration the acid-based titration with the 
848 titrino plus now to do the Carl Fisher titration we use the Tiamo as I said and in the Tiamo first we make sure that the titrando is doing the conditioning part so we get the method first the Carl Fisher titer the method that we are using to do the conditioning part first so basically what it is doing in the conditioning time is it's getting so you basically take the methanol the ethanol solution by pressing this pump and the solution comes from the bag bottle the ethanol bottle until the tip of the electrode here we are using a double platinum electrode until the tip of the electrode is under the ethanol and then during the conditioning period it removes the moisture that is present in this ethanol solution by adding iodine Carl Fisher reagent to react with the moisture and consume the moisture that is present before we add the sample or the standard this solution it removes the moisture to do that we start the run the starter starts so when there is no moisture the liquid will be clear uh, from clear clear means there is moisture present so once this iodine solution the Carl Fisher reagent is added the liquid will turn to pale yellow to dark yellow to dark brown in that color range when there is no moisture once you add a sample with moisture the color become clear and then the titration continues until the moisture is consumed by iodine and the color changes to dark brown from yellow to brown so once it's removing the intrinsic moisture in the ethanol solvent the conditioning is continuing and after it does the solution color looks like this and it shows that the track finished and then it will say conditioning ok once it removes all the moisture so now to add a sample either a sample or I'm going to show with the water solution as a standard what we do is we go to the method and we load the sample from Carl Fisher sample Once we add the Carl Fisher sample, it starts the conditioning again. Sometimes it takes a few minutes 
to do the conditioning depending on how much moisture is present that's why we use this desiccant to make sure that the bottle is uh, as moisture tight as possible where the solution is the silica gel Here also there is a desiccant to remove the moisture from the sample cell. It actually turns to conditioning okay with a green, green um, uh, command and then you are ready to add sample. So what we do, either liquid when we add liquid we use this syringe to collect the liquid then we put it in the balance we tear it to zero and then we add after we add the sample we take the weight again the difference in weight is the amount of sample that is added we add that amount of sample and the Carl Fisher titration gives the moisture content in that sample we can also use the powder and for powder we use this glass bowl in this glass bowl we take the whole weight of the glass bowl with the sample in it we tear it to zero and then after we tear it to zero then we remove this the sample is actually in this bowl when we do the powder sample the sample goes in this bowl and then we add the powder directly here and then we insert this bowl again in the glass cylinder we take the weight again difference between zero and the value is the amount of powder added and that's how we determine the moisture content in the solid sample liquid sample we directly add with the syringe solid sample we add with that bowl the liquid color changing to dark brown to make sure there is not a trace of moisture present it's a volumetric Carl Fisher titration. Titrando is more advanced titrator from Metrum than Titrino Plus. In fact, in this Titrando, you can do Carl Fisher titration. You can also do with an additional burette. You can also do chloride titration with potentiometric chloride titration you can do acid based titration because in the back of this 841 titrando there are multiple port in fact all these ports can be shown in the in the Tiamo if you go to configuration you go to device and in the device or manual if I go to manual here it shows it has all the inputs there is there are four inputs only one is using here input number one that input number one is to connect the TI stand starter and this burette is connected to the starter as opposed to the titrando so titrando's inputs are not taken by the burette. Burette is, connect, burette is connected to the starter and the starter is connected to the titrando and the titrando can have four different devices connected in its back. Each one can do one type of titration. So while it is working it's not going to show the entire configuration but here you can see all the devices that are connected and that are free that are not all the ports that are occupied and and the and the ports which are unoccupied so it is a pretty advanced titrator 
which can do multiple titration simultaneously from Carl Fisher to acid base to potentiometric titration can be done simultaneously. Still doing the conditioning. We have to have a balance with at least three decimal points for Carl Fisher titration. The data of previous titration is, is, is saved in the internal memory as well as in the TBase database for every titration. Here you can create the method. You can load the method that you want to run. whatever method you want to load debt, ph it can do four different modes DET which is the most common one for chloride or acid base monotonic NET, set point SET and CAL is for calibration of pH meter so those are the different methods the one we use most of the time is the DET method of titration. All the sample size, ID, unit, everything can be added directly on the screen. Similar format is for 916 where you can add load method and it shows all the methods the one we use is debt u when we are doing just one sample or for multiple samples we do the debt auto and the system under device manager it shows all the devices which are connected Here also it shows the dosing device, the sample processor. You can actually control the sample processor right here. So you can say next. It moves the rack. You can go back and forth. Work position. It will bring the tower down. That's the work position. then home position it brings it back so the individual device can be like starter 
There are two starters here. One starter is in the in the sample processor and one starter in the T-touch directly. So if it's a starter, please select the desired starter. If it says T-touch, if it says start, then it starts the starter. And you can control the speed of the starter, how fast you want the starter to stop. So individual devices, starter, the electrode, the sample processors can be controlled here as well. It's still doing the conditioning. As soon as the conditioning is done, we're going to start the call feature titration. The color is pretty dark brown from the iodine added it comes from Sigma Aldrich or Fisher uh, different manufacturers uh, give this uh, this particular call Fisher reagent but the one we buy we buy from a company called Honeywell who manufactured this Carl Fisher reagent from Honeywell so when the titration is done it generates the result and it goes back to conditioning not ok again for the next sample to come and then it gives the titration report and this report can be modified based on different templates so this is how the Carl Fisher titration is done with Metrum 841 titrando first you do the titrant then you do the sample and determine the moisture content the volumetric Carl Fisher titration so at the end of the titration you just uh, discard the solution by pressing the exit and it goes back to the rest. And then the cell is ready for the next sample. So every time you insert the sample you take the fresh batch of ethanol solvent condition it with the hydronal titrant after the conditioning is done you add your sample and determine the moisture content and after the titration you clean the cell again for the next sample